Hey everybody, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave and today we're going to talk about something that I just learned about digitally recording from the console into your DAW. Super exciting and I get to use it tomorrow morning. Let's run the intro clip and then jump into what I just found out. All right, so a number of years ago, I made a video that I'll post down in the description, which talks about um, using the sub-low frequency, the oscillator, to be able to produce a low frequency that you can then utilize on a kick drum, or in my case, what I'm doing tomorrow, on a cajon. So I'm gonna run cajon uh, as a percussion instrument on stage at my church, and when I play the low end, it sounds like a hollow, small box because that's what it is, let's be realistic. It's just a box. It's gonna have a bunch of kind of nasty reverberations around inside of it. And so what we do is we cut out a bunch of that low end with our EQ and then we allow this uh, oscillator that's built into the console to be able to produce that low frequency for us. And we do some cool things with the gate and, um, and, and it just, when you hit the mic, or not the mic, but when you hit the drum, it activates the mic that activates a gate, and uh, we just get the low frequency to go boom real quick into the subs. It warms the room up and it takes your acoustic event, which is what we're doing it for. Uh, it takes the acoustic event and it adds more energy and warmth into the room. Check out that video. I go through a whole description and whole setup for how it's done on the console. But what I've never been able to do is record that and what comes through that specific channel into my DAW. So I've been out of town for my day job all this week. I just got back in town yesterday and I'm playing Cajon tomorrow. And I wanna be able to record it because we've just switched around some of our live streaming equipment. I wanna have an accurate representation of exactly what goes through the console and, uh, and be able to bring it back home and work with that in real time in a post editing situation, as well as pushing it back through my own console here in my office. So what I wanna do is show you what I just found out, little tricks and how this is set up briefly, and then we'll dive into the solution. So I'm just gonna do this handheld here because we're gonna be bouncing around a couple of different places. The first off, I have a regular vocal mic. This is my Sennheiser uh, vocal mic. I've got it plugged into channel one, input one, and when I talk into it, you can see that it recognizes it. It registers, uh, don't matter what is going on on uh, channel two, but it registers, hey, hey, you see it bump up. That's doing microphone things. Also, in the mains, you can see that that is reflected up there, and that's a good thing. Now, the next thing that I have is down here in Mixbus 6. I'm doing this exactly how it is on my board, but I did start with blank scene. So Mixbus 6, you can see, is just a, uh, a constant drone of sound. That audio, if I mute my house microphone over here, channel one, and if I just come over here and I turn this on to main left and right, you'll see that I just get a steady signal. That's an oscillator. That oscillator is in the monitor section when I come over in the monitor section to oscillator, you can see that I have a 53 hertz tone down here in the bottom that is activated, being generated, and it's going to mix bus six, only to mix bus six. Again, I talk about this in the other video, but I just wanted to show you the full setup here. So that is what's going to mix bus six. When I select left and right, you see that it comes out the mains, but we don't want it in the mains. We want this to go over and be the source of channel two. So channel two is now uh, sourced by selecting this. I hit the home screen and go to config tab. And now we can see that bus six is the source of my second fader or channel two. When I look at the scribble strip down here, may come through, may not. Channel two sourced by bus six right there. Now the gate is turned on. When I look at the gate up on the screen, you can see that it's bouncing around and that's because I have the source, the key source for my gate is set to channel one. So it's watching the microphone that is over on, on the side of my desk, but when I bring it closer to my mouth, you'll see that, hey, hey, if I, boom, 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 if 
I act like a drum, you'll see that it opens up. Now we have to dial in the gate specific to the instrument and that's for the live environment. But what we're gonna do now is I wanna be able to record what comes through here. Uh, when I go and do this normally, uh, what I would have in my routing setup is this would come up here. And in this case, it's all local input. So on my card setting right there, I would have local all one through 32 that go out to my DAW, and when we look at the DAW, boom, 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 we can see channel one gets channel one sound from my microphone. What I wanna have is channel two activated, but I only want channel two activated when the gate happens, so I want the actual signal. So the first thing I tested was, can I go into my routing and set up the, uh, the bus to come out? And when I did that, I went to user out, went down and I went to output and output six because that's my bus. That's the bus that's creating the oscillator. When I do that and I come over to card and choose user out, let's go down here and find user out. That's now set, you can see to channel one and bus six. If we look at the DAW, Bus six is just pegged because it's got the oscillator. I can still talk into the mic and that moves, but it's not doing only the things that I hear in the house. So how do we fix this? We come over here. It's kind of a combination of the P16 trick. I'll add the P16 trick down in the comments as well, but let's look at this here. P16 trick, I'm gonna come over to P16. In this case, I'm just going to channel two. It keeps it easier for me. I'm going to direct out channel two, post fader, that's in P16. Then I went over to user out because that's what I was dealing with. Output one is my microphone. Output two, I went to P16. And then I chose the P16 channel two. Finally, when I come over and I look at my card settings now, you'll see that I get local in one, and then direct out channel two post fader. All right, so at first glance, we go from these settings, we come over here, we look and I go boom, boom. We don't see anything move. Why is that? Because the fader, let's come down here, it's dependent on this fader, it is post fader. When I turn this up here to unity or anywhere up, this signal is still happening, but now we go back here and we look at nothing there, and then boom, 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 boom. So that's now getting me the direct signal that's happening that is dependent on the gate. So the gate opens up, it lets the signal through, but if I turn this fader down, let's see how much we get now. Boom, boom, so now we get less signal. So I'm literally just holding you guys in my hand, walking you through this. I was so ecstatic to figure this out. I knew that I could do inputs using the P16 trick, clearly made a video about that a while ago, but being able to capture the internal oscillator going through a channel and then being able to use the gate that's side chain to a different channel and only capture that sound that's being produced internally of the console back into my DAW was really mind blowing for me. So I'm super excited about this. Hopefully this video helps you out. Hopefully you can utilize this. I hear my dog and my kids going crazy again. I've been out all week and they're in the other room going crazy. Hopefully that's not distracting for you. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. If you need any assistance or you wanna find any links to the videos that I've talked about, they're down in the, in the description. And if you would like some one-on-one uh, -on -one help, you can also find a link to my website down there as well. But that's it for now. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.